everyone, welcome back to the Electro Lurker. This past week was a pretty fun and eventful week. First of all, I want to start off with a bit of a correction. Last week, I was talking about the Chula Vista controversy. And just to make a correction, all of the dancers as well as the judges were from the United States. But because Emotion is from Mexico, on the YouTube comments of those videos, you had a, a lot of supporters from both sides, a lot of people who supported the, uh, you know, the, the battle style and a lot of people who supported the freestyle. So there was definitely a, a kind of clash going down there, but all the dancers were from the United States. So I just wanted to make that correction. Now onto videos, definitely the hardest video of the week comes to us from Quad G from Ecuador. And this guy, he made a webcam video of him dancing in his room. And like one of his arms is like the size of my head. Like for a Hispanic guy, this guy's arms are huge. So they're like absolutely massive. And this guy's just going nuts in his room, just doing stuff that I didn't even know existed. So definitely hardest video coming from him right there. Also yesterday, Dash Generation USA released a video of this new dancer named Mars from I Love My Style and I'm 99.7% sure that this video is 100% pure vertigo. You know, vertigo style or vertigo dancing is kind of like the Loch Ness Monster of Electro. Like people know that it exists, but no one knows what it looks like. And trying to like ask someone to describe what vertigo is, is kind of like asking a chango or a guido to describe dubstep. Uh, dubstep is like a drum and bass mixed with like a house music. And you got like synthesizers in there, you got like really dark sound and synthesizers. You know, like really from England, you know. So yeah, now when somebody asks you what vertigo is, you can just uh, show them this video. Because this is pure vertigo going down right here. And it's uh, pretty dope that she learned that style because uh, definitely it hasn't been done in a few years. Also want to mention a challenge coming out. Phantom, for the co-founder of House of Electro, has sent out a challenge to everyone who's enlisted as a competitor in Major League Electro. For the past few weeks, I've been doing this segment on uh, my channel here called Webcam Wednesday. Basically, you just turn on a webcam, dance, throw the video up on your channel. Uh, no editing allowed. The only edit you're allowed to do is you're allowed to overlay the, uh, the song onto the video so it's like good quality. So Phantom is challenging everyone now to make a webcam Wednesday leading up to the, every, all the competitors to make a webcam Wednesday leading up to this event just to build anticipation and to kind of get the, uh, the juices flowing. Just to clarify, uh, if you make a video, post it on your own channel and then you can just send me a message and I'll uh, post it up on the Tumblr or I'll make a playlist on my channel. And this then leads to the biggest news of the week. Biggest news of the week is, of course, the announcing of the first ever Major League Electro Tournament on June 19th. I know that it's a bit far away, but already there's a huge buzz going down on Facebook. Technology tagged me in the flyer, and now every time I come on Facebook, there's like 89,000 notifications. People are just uh, talking about this all the time. And uh, today what I want to talk about actually is just this whole, uh, this whole concept of battles in general. Because, you know, it's always been my idea that if there was a competition in the United States, DFK would just clean the whole thing out. And that's not because I'm like a fanboy or anything, but they've been doing this the longest than anyone else. Uh, they, they were probably the first people to emerge after the original Portland school. So like a uh, first generation or the first school was Technology, Miami, uh, Sarah, DJ Cruz, all the people that met up at Portland. Second generation was House of Electro, DFK, and then the San Diego boom is now kind of the third generation. So DFK has been doing this 
a lot longer than everyone else. And you know, after seeing the uh, the Chula Vista controversy, I kind of started wondering like, okay, DFK is more of a freestyle crew. So will they be able to stand up to this new generation of kids who have spent their whole career training specifically for battles and for vertifight? And that brings me to the main question of this week. This week, the number one question is, is bringing Vertify to the United States a good idea or a bad idea? Because all of or a good portion of the proceeds from Major League Electro are going to uh, this fund to try to bring Vertify to the United States. And uh, the best way that I can explain this is with an analogy of skateboarding. Uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s, skateboarding was like at an all-time low in popularity. There was no like monster energy drink, no video games, no Life of Ryan TV show where you have guys crying for half the episode. There was like no money flowing. But this was the area where the Embarcadero scene in San Francisco where the EMB was flourishing. And if you just look on YouTube, type in like a Embarcadero or EMB skateboarding, you'll definitely see some videos of like Mike Carroll from that era. And back then people went out to that scene just because they wanted to be part of the movement and because they loved the sport of skateboarding. But then later on in the 90s and in this past decade when uh, the boom happened, now you have people coming into skateboarding who are like, okay, in three months I'm going to have a video. I'm going to send it out to this shop. I'm going to get a shop sponsor. By six months I want to be in this competition. In three years I want to be an am. Like for them it's kind of like more about progressing rather than uh, just enjoying the sport of skateboarding. And I think that if Vertify comes to the United States, that's the kind of situation that could transpire. You're going to have people coming in who are the exact opposite of DFK. Like instead of dancing because they like the dance or because they want to express themselves, you're going to have people getting in who are like, okay, in three months I want to be in this competition. I want to place at this place in Vertifight. I want to get this amount of subscribers. And you run the risk of losing this kind of a freestyle atmosphere that values, like I was saying last week, that values originality, that values art and the values flow and also keep in mind too that uh, in Montreal you have dance till you die which is probably the biggest electro competition in Montreal outside of Mexico and this isn't bird certified it's never been associated with vertifite and it's still huge so uh, definitely leave your uh, comments on this video answering the question is bringing vertifite to the United States good or bad, and I'll see you next week. All right, peace.